Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dorn. and in today's video allow me to discuss something a little difficult, a little troubling, a little scary. That's the issue of uh, uh, narcissists. I've had dealings with close friends and people in politics who have shown traits that are related to narcissistic personality disorder. And the thing about narcissistic personality disorder is that it's one of the hardest disorders to cure. A person who is a narcissist, there are very few treatments that work in a narcissist. Uh, even if you know you are a narcissist, it might be hard to actually uh, find a therapy form that can work to fix the narcissist's issues. Often uh, what people have found is that narcissists are not people who have uh, un unusually high self-esteem. On the contrary, narcissists struggle with an extremely low self-confidence. They are, to a high extent, really uh, scared about their flaws and their issues. They are really aware of their issues, but they are working actively to hide these issues from other people. And, and this is the difficult part, this is why narcissists can uh, be deeply problematic and can cause deep harm in society. They are ready to invoke guilt trips and harassment and all kinds of techniques to make other people feel bad or guilty, uh, to make other people control other people. Uh, the narcissist differentiates themselves from normal people in that for them, guilt trips and uh, gaslighting and other treatments uh, are a normal part of communication, an acceptable part of communication. It's acceptable to make another person feel guilty. Truth is, most of us feel icky about making other people feel guilty. Most of us are so concerned about uh, not just how we are feeling, but how other people are impacted. Uh, and I'm not talking just empaths here. I'm saying even normal people uh, with a normal empathy level are usually good at... Uh, they, uh, they usually have an awareness of how they impact other people. Most of us, when we think about it, have an awareness of how we hurt other people, how we affect other people, and what... Uh, we do to other people. Sometimes we can shut it out, sometimes we can pretend not to care, but we can to most extent empathize with others. Everyone can to some extent empathize, which means anyone can be a potential victim to guilt trips from the narcissist. It's said that empaths are the most likely targets of narcissists, and that is often because narcissists need a high amount of support and empathy from other people. Uh, they need other people to make them feel better about themselves, they need other people to verify them, they need other people to understand them, and empaths can constantly give that understanding. Uh, they can, uh, when asked for it, and narcissists often ask for it. Narcissists tend to ask for support, sympathy, and love from other people. They tend to not just ask for it, but they also tend to demand it. And they tend to become angry or aggravated when other people refuse to give any form of empathy at any point of time. If you don't answer, if you are avoiding them, or if you at a certain point uh, say nothing, they may resort to getting angry, they may guilt you for not saying anything, and they might force you to give sympathy. And this is also where people talk about covert narcissists, because not all narcissists revolve around aggressive harassment techniques. Other people, like covert narcissists, revolve around uh, making other people feel guilty. The covert narcissist is often uh, attacking themselves and making themselves into martyrs. And uh, when other people aren't giving them attention, they say, oh, so you don't like me at all, huh? I figured nobody likes me, nobody cares about me. They will say things like that often, not because they think it's true or not. They don't care about it, whether it's true or not so much. Uh, as they say it, to make the other person stay. They say it to make the other person say, oh no, but I do love you, no, we all love you. <laughs> they, uh, they put people in situations of guilt and where you feel like you have to be there, you have to stay, you have to help the other person. And that's why empaths fall into the trap. 
you can you can imagine that empath is a kind of person who is naive or refusing to see the issues but i tend to say that on the contrary i think empaths are better than average at recognizing narcissists uh, but the thing is empaths often choose to ignore it even if they know where normal people will go, oh, but harassment, oh, but the covert narcissism, I guess that's acceptable. I'm sure they don't mean anything with it. But often empaths are deeply troubled by what they see, and they are led in there by a need to help, correct, to heal, to provide some form of support, to help raise the other person's self-esteem, to help fix the situation. Empaths are also usually aware of when other people engage in manipulation techniques. They know when other people are hurting other people, and they can feel so bad about this. They can see how a narcissist is attacking others, defaming others, hurting others, and they can feel a need to go in there, uh, befriend the narcissist, and to support the narcissist into, <laughs> with the hope that eventually the narcissist will change, uh, redeem themselves, and start treating others better. The hope is that if you give that narcissist uh, love and empathy, they will eventually begin to reflect that in themselves. They will again eventually begin to feel that sense of empathy and self-love that the empath is giving them. But often I think that on the contrary, it just becomes a degree of enabling. It becomes a degree of where the love you give, the support you give, uh, <laughs> becomes like a fuel to the narcissist. It supports what they do, it makes them feel like the manipulation techniques are working, paying off, that uh, everything is perfect, that, oh, people are starting to love me now, the harassment I put out to the fear other people gave me, uh, it, uh, it made the situation better. So often it becomes a degree of enabling which can be dangerous because it can actually feed the narcissistic behaviors and it can uh, make the narcissist feel like their methods are legit legitimate, uh, that it will help others. So I would recommend uh, higher awareness of all of this. Now. I would argue that narcissists are not easy to recognize. I've, uh, I would say that even today I would struggle to know a narcissist from just the surface value because often narcissists have extremely well polished surfaces. They look, uh, they look kind, nice, friendly. They often talk about how good they are and how amazing they are and they often get other people to recommend them and to vouch for them and to talk about yes, uh, this person is a really good person, sure they can say mean things sometimes and sure I fear them a little but they are a really nice person when they want to be and when they, uh, in the end, in the deeper level, uh, beneath it all. Sometimes it's like when I hear another person say, oh that person is so nice, that person is such a good person, uh, it's like I wonder <laughs> if they just say it because they are trying to uh, <laughs> legitimize they are trying to uh, uh, they for some reason I would ask myself why do they feel a need of saying it at all I think it's usually only easy to notice narcissist in hindsight uh, but I think that uh, and this is often where door slamming comes up where people talk about no contact because often I think that there is no other strategy to deal with, with the narcissist than no contact. I don't think that there is anything you can say or do uh, to help. Often I think anything you say or do actually can be reinterpreted and this is why narcissism can't be treated. Because the narcissist is so uh, focused on making everything they hear about themselves. It's re everything they hear is reinterpreted to verify what they think and what they believe and what they see is right. No matter if it is or not. Uh, the narcissist who talks to a psychologist, who talks to other people, is constantly changing the words inside themselves and reinterpreting the situation to a way that supports their narcissism, that supports their uh, worldview uh, and how they see themselves and how they see other people. Often it, that's, that's why it's hard to reason with a narcissist. It's uh, often that they have their own shape and form of reason which is uh, unusual to normal people.
still I understand that you might feel a degree of empathy, you might feel a degree of wanting to be good towards people, and you might not want to uh, say anything bad about a potential narcissist or to do anything bad, and I don't think you should either. I don't think that uh, uh, doing something toxic against someone who shows narcissistic traits is a good thing. I don't think that helps anyone. I don't think it helps you. I don't think it heals anyone. Uh, only The only thing that I think helps is awareness and uh, an understanding, a deeper understanding, and this is why I often talk in my videos about how empaths need to be selfish sometimes. I tend to say that if you want to be a good person, you have to understand yourself, and you have to understand what you need to be a good person, you have to understand uh, that martyrship or pushing yourself to be selfless beyond what is reasonable can be deeply damaging. Um, it can mean the opposite, that you become so hurt, so damaged, so depressed that you actually start hurting other people and doing the reverse of what you intended. So often selfishness, in the, to the extent of simply building up a healthy, uh, normal, developed, natural way of being yourself, can help you uh, be a better person to other people. It's like when in airplanes people tell you to put on the gas mask on yourself before you help other people. I don't think there's anything wrong with that and I think that the truly most giving and kind people are also people that are ready to extend that kindness and givingness to themselves. So I hope this video might have helped some people understand better what narcissism is and how to recognize it and maybe how to deal with it. I strongly emphasize once again, no contact is probably one of the best strategies, uh, not responding to guilt extortion techniques, uh, making sure that you uh, empathize, sure, but also empathize with yourself and also understand that you're not responsible for another person, you're not responsible for their help, happiness or to fix them. Um, you can help other people, but you don't you are not responsible to do it and you should not feel guilty if you don't want to do it that's all for now i hope you all enjoyed this video and as always i hope to see you guys in the next one